We're looking at page one from the winter 2012 exam one. The first question has to do with a test prep company. Most of these companies claim that students who do their courses do better on those standardized tests than students who don't take their courses. So here's a graph that one of the companies providing. Students who did not take their um, particular prep course, how well they performed on that test, and the scores summarized for those who did. I can see generally that those who did take their prep course scored a bit higher overall than those who did not. In fact, our first sentence that we're asked to complete here is to look at the median performance and compare them. So the median for those who did take the prep course seems to be about 350, whereas the median for those who did not take this prep course, um, I'm going to estimate that to be about 330. Based on the median performance, those who do take the course seem to score approximately how many points higher than those who did not take their course. So 350 compared to 330, I'm going to estimate that to be about 20 points higher. And this is where we need to see your work a little bit on the exam by giving us that idea of what you're reading off at median to be. And if someone had said 328, we would have accepted that range or that difference too. We're asked to complete another sentence about those who do take the course, so focusing on the yes group, 25% scored higher than what number of points? 25%. So that must mean either Q1 or Q3, because both of those are going to have 25% on one side and 75% going the other direction. If I look at Q1, which is the 25th percentile, but I look at what percentage of the students scored higher than Q1? Well, that's going to be 75% of the students scored better, and that's not what I want. So if I try Q3 here and put in the value for Q3 of 400, is my sentence correct? 25% scored higher than 400 points. 400 points scored higher than that? Yes, that's 25% there, so that's now a correct statement. Now we're asked to do a comparison of these two sets of observations to perform some kind of test of hypotheses. And one of the assumptions needed is that the observations in each group look, need to look like they're a random sample coming from a population that has a normal model. So what graph would we want to make which would be best for helping us assess if a normal model is valid for, say, the population of test scores for students who do take the prep course that's represented by this data here. What model would be best, or what graph would be best made to check on the normality condition for a population of scores? Now we've had a couple of graphs that we can look at to check to see if a normal model is reasonable, but the best one, the one that's a little more definitive for us, has been the QQ plot. The other graph, of course, is a histogram that does show the general shape of a distribution but not necessarily going to be the best for discerning if a normal model is the actual underlying model, especially if our number of observations isn't too large. So a QQ plot is a more discerning plot, which if we made it and it looks like that normality condition is valid, that graph would look like the points falling along a straight line with a positive slope. Maybe a little bit of fluctuation, but not much. What we would have here would be the observed values, or scores, compared to the expected normal values. The values you would have expected for those scores if a normal model were really the underlying model or distribution, and they should match up pretty well. So should, they should follow along a straight line with a positive slope, and that's what our QQ plot should look like. If an answer of a histogram were given in the first part, then we'd expect, of course, to see a sketch of a histogram showing generally that bell-shaped pattern.